Acts. What is it that we have received through that very important American Rescue Act? And everybody keeps hearing hearing infrastructure. Um, Unbundle that a little bit for us, if you would. Well, I'd be happy to. Uh, Certainly, uh, we have had to provide an awful lot of support for for folks uh, and families who have been struggling with this uh, pandemic for far too long. Uh, But we uh, uh, really uh, uh, passed some significant legislation to help folks uh, starting earlier this year with the American Rescue Plan, as you mentioned, and a number of very critical pieces uh, in that plan to provide resources uh, to states and to local communities. Uh, One of those uh, was the Paycheck Protection Program for small businesses that were really struggling uh, and uh, wanted to keep people on the payroll. We wanted to make sure folks continued to receive a a check uh, while we were going through this uh, very tough time. Uh, That passed. Uh, It kept many of our, most of all of our small businesses uh, uh, in business while continuing to to pay folks. So I'm sure many of uh, the viewers here today were in those businesses that were able to continue to get a paycheck as a result of that paycheck protection program. We also put in a provision specifically for restaurants, which were hit the hardest of all of these small businesses uh, and to allow them to continue to survive. Had we not done that, uh, most of our restaurants, uh, one, found themselves in a terrible position and many more would have gone out of business than we have uh, right now that would be able to stabilize that. The other key f- uh, fact was, of course, the stimulus check uh, that provided an immediate infusion of money uh, for folks uh, and families, uh, as well as the child tax credit that provided an additional tax credit for individuals so with children, both very young children, uh, as well as children um, uh, up into high school uh, age. And that has uh, been absolutely critical. The infrastructure uh, bill that you mentioned uh, deals with uh, the physical infrastructure, our roads uh, and bridges, uh, Uh, investments in our ports and airports, uh, and it was something that has been long uh, overdue. In in fact, if if you look at at folks who study the quality of our roads and bridges and all of our infrastructure, which is critical for our economy, it's critical for jobs, it's critical for just getting around and not hitting potholes and all the horrible things that can happen if you're not maintaining infrastructure. If you look at it on a worldwide basis, uh, they they rank uh, the United States 13th in the world in terms of the quality of our infrastructure. This is the this is the United States of America. We don't want to be ranked 13th uh, in the world. Uh, we need to have first class infrastructure uh, and that's uh, what uh, passed and, and you're going to see that immediately in fixing bridges, hundreds of millions of dollars and billions of dollars coming for bridges as well as roads uh, into our state. So as the construction season kicks off here shortly, as we spring comes along, you're going to see even more robust construction. The other thing that I think is vitally important uh, is there also investments in in uh, in online infrastructure? We're we're here. We are on a Zoom call. Uh, exactly. You need to have access to the internet. Uh, High speed broadband internet is absolutely essential in today's uh, world. But not everybody has access to it uh, in our urban areas as well as our rural areas. Uh, we've made substantial investments now so that uh, nearly everybody, or the goal is to have everybody in our state, no matter where you live, can have access to quality, affordable. Uh, internet service. And and maybe I can just put out one that really impacts people in a very direct way is that part of that is to make sure it is affordable. Uh, A lot of folks find that internet is not affordable and high-speed broadband is not affordable in the greater Detroit area. And we now have a a program that will be kicking in to provide assistance to families that you can get up to $30 per month uh, to help you pay your internet uh, access uh, bill. So the FCC is rolling that out. And I would just encourage uh, all the viewers uh, here today to take a look if you qualify. Uh, over 2 million people will qualify for this uh, additional help uh, in the state of Michigan. You can just go to the website, the FCC, which is the Federal Communications Commission, but it's just uh, FCC.gov. And I think it's right on the front page. Uh, this program is going to start in March. So we're just a, a month away. And I would certainly encourage folks to go to that website because you may very well qualify to have $30 a month provided so that you can have a high-speed broadband internet afford uh, the monthly cost of it. Senator Peters, uh, two other questions before you leave. Uh, one of them, you touched on it with the infrastructure. We know that Michigan has been adversely impact- impacted around lead quality, uh, re- relevant to our water. And also we've had the uh, misfortune of some storms. Uh, can you talk about in what ways the infrastructure dollars or some of your work is helping to make sure that we have clean and accessible water? 
Well, absolutely. And it is fundamental to the community to have uh, clean uh, drinking water. Uh, the lead contamination, of course, we saw the, what, uh, the tragedy in, in Flint, but we know all the urban areas all have too many lead service lines. The infrastructure uh, bill provides resources for local communities to start pulling up all of those lead service lines uh, and replace them with something uh, that is safe. So we will see that money uh, getting into our communities uh, uh, very shortly. Uh, to uh, make sure that we're protecting uh, homeowners and and, fo and folks uh, who are uh, who uh, have, are in older buildings that have lead service lines to know that those can be replaced. So that's happening now. We're also actually another contaminant, which is uh, PFAS, which I'm sure a lot of your viewers have uh, heard about. Uh, we also have major investments to reduce uh, and to eliminate as much PFAS contamination uh, as we possibly can. You mentioned the Storm Act, and this has been a, an issue that uh, hit us in the Detroit area in particular, uh, and that's uh, flooding uh, as a result of very severe storms uh, that have hit. And what we know is the result of climate change uh, that we, and we're seeing it every, every season, uh, we get uh, more storms and when we get the storms, they tend to be a lot more severe and dump a whole lot more water than what we've seen in the past, which really overwhelms our, our infrastructure and our sewer systems. So I authored legislation uh, that has pa passed into law over a year ago, and in the infrastructure package was funded with over $500 million to provide very, very low interest loans to communities to strengthen that infrastructure so they can handle the big storms when they come. You know, it's a, it, it makes a whole lot more sense to build things stronger uh, than trying to uh, pick up the pieces so when they get uh, uh, overrun uh, as a result of uh, a tremendous amount of water that's uh, coming into those systems. Uh, in fact, uh, from a taxpayer perspective, every dollar we invest to make our infrastructure stronger, we end up saving $6. It's a whole lot more expensive to pick up the pieces. And of course, it's a horrible thing for anybody to go through that's had flooded basements and other, uh, other impact as a result of flooding. So uh, that's in the infrastructure bill as well. Uh, you'll start seeing those, uh, those critical investments being made uh, in the months ahead as well. Could you talk to us about uh, what you envision as being the path forward for the voting rights? And what do you advocate to us as citizens, how we need to be involved around leadership, whether it's our schools, whether it's Congress? Senator Peters. Well, yeah, absolutely critical uh, question because there isn't anything more fundamental to our democracy than the ability to make sure that you can vote, that your voice can be heard, and have an opportunity to get the change that uh, you desire through the through the ballot box. And unfortunately, we've seen uh, many state legislatures, and, and I'm going to call it what it is: uh, Republican, uh, strictly Republican efforts to try to make it more difficult for people to vote. And it's really uh, it's, it's is uh, an attack, in in my mind, uh, an attack on the very foundation of our democracy. And when you think of what happened in this last election in 2020, which was uh, an election, despite what people are saying, it was fair, it was free, no evidence of widespread fraud. And what we should really celebrate, here we were in the middle of a pandemic, and yet we had the highest turnout of voters that we have seen in recent history. We should be celebrating an incredible success that people felt empowered. They felt that they needed to have their voice heard. They went out and voted in record numbers, even though we were in the middle of a, of a pandemic. And yet now you have state legislatures that are trying to make it more difficult, roll it back and make it more difficult. Uh, we need to step up, certainly at the federal level. We are going to continue to fight for that, to put a floor there. But really where this goes is uh, our state legislature. So I, I would encourage uh, the viewers here uh, that are watching that care deeply about this issue, and I hope we all care deeply about this issue, would reach out to the state legislature and talk to your local state representatives and senators and make sure they know that this is something that you care deeply about. Our democracy requires us to continue to protect uh, those very basic rights and that uh, they will be held accountable if they start rolling back uh, these, uh, these protections that voters uh, need. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.